Medical Disclaimer This video is for informational purposes. It does not replace the medical advice of a trained doctor. Seek medical advice before beginning any treatment plan. Hi, and welcome back to Mike's Diabetes World. Ah, it's a kind of cloudyish day here in Vancouver. Let's take a look at where I'm at. I'm at 37% in range. Now, if I go back and find the ground, I've been high for most of the day. And I finally come down. Last night, fine. My diabetic nurse has tried to contact an endocrinologist to find out what to do. And things are going downhill. I'm only really said I would keep up with at least one video per day. But you know what? I couldn't do more. I'm just so tired most of the time. And I apologize for the quality. Let's get this out of the way. Now, when you are low at a young age, I remember having a low and then jumping up and continuing on after having some sugar. Nowadays, oh my God. If I have a low that's sort of long enough or severe enough, I am sort of really out of it the next day. I'm lucky I don't have to work anymore, but you need to be aware of this. Keeping your body well-maintained is sort of the best thing you can do. I've always said, after having a low, I always feel like a wrung out dish rag. And if my low has gone into a migraine, I just say, I have to think, to think. And keeping your body out of this range becomes sort of I have to I have to feel <coughs> better my first time I started feeling this was after a low I would have a headache and usually you know Tylenol or whatever would get rid of this. But then it progressed <coughs> to where this hand would start going numb. Like somebody had injected with some Novocaine or something like that. And then I would start seeing the auras and the migraine started. And I could work. I can remember taking a cab home, throwing money at the cab driver, got home, and revisited everything I ate that day. <laughs> yeah, glamorous, I know. But that kind of has subsided. The last time I had a severe migraine, God, it was years ago, early 2000s, when I was meeting Dad for dinner, or, sorry, lunch, and I just couldn't concentrate. And I didn't even make it home. It was 
he sort of threw up all over the train. I got off the train, went home, and I slept for like three days. What the hell is happening? Now, when I have a low, even if I, I haven't done it here, but I would fall out of bed, and I would press my, I used to have a little button thing, and I'd press it, and the ambulance would have to come, you know, they had my code. But then after the next couple of days, I just slept. So, I believe it's harder to have low blood sugar because you lose control. And I think that's why you are just so tired after. Oh, God, is it terrible. But a lot of it now with the CGM, I can press this button, oops, and right away it tells me I'm 15.5. I don't think I have a danger of going low, but if I had arrows going down quickly, that would sort of tell you which way your blood sugar was going. And you could catch it sooner. You didn't necessarily always have to have a finger poke. And besides having you feel terrible, there's the rule of three. Now, I don't know if this just sort of was brought up by my endocrinologist or at the time, if she believed it, was once you have one blood sugar, you're kind of set up to have more. And I saw that when I got in here. When I got in here, there was big changes and everything. And the people here, why are you going low? Are you giving too much insulin? And I would say no. And I think it was okay. I'm in a new surrounding. But since then, I haven't really been severe low. I may have dropped to three something, 3.2 or, but I don't have severe lows. Lately, I've been having severe highs and I think that's the stomach issue. You never know. But if you're experiencing any side effects of being low, the uh, side effects, talk to your endocrinologist about it. He or she may have a few tricks up their tray. My first big trick was, and this necessarily wasn't from my endocrinologist, it was from my diabetic nurse, and it was having uncooked cornstarch. And you would add it to things that you don't cook, and that would help stabilize your blood sugar. You know, yogurt, you can have a yogurt. Uh, you, I think Rice Krispie squares, you don't need to cook. And that sort of starts me to settle down. Now, if my pump goes off with the alarm and I see that I'm going low, I press the, for the nurse up, up at the desk and usually get some sort of food, which is a good thing. And at home, I wouldn't have that. And I think, oh, well, I'm low. And you just don't really want to do anything. I don't know. 
some of the things that were happening at home haven't necessarily happened here. But if you are having any side effects of being low, you need to contact your endocrinologist and come up with a plan. The sooner you catch a low, the better off you'd be. Having a low, and so I'm like, okay, I'm low, I'll just have a nap. You'll end up in the hospital. Maybe not as long as I'm here for, but you learn. So take care of yourself. Try to keep yourself out of the very low, and your doctor will give you a range. And it's important that you stay within this range. Now, I'm going to sign off now, but I'll bring this up again later. Have a great day, and we'll talk later. Bye now. My email is mikesdiabetesworld at gmail.com Mike's Diabetes World at gmail.com <laughs>